Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. And in this video, as you guys can see, we're doing something a little bit different here. We are actually inside my car right now. Is this the first appearance of my car? No. No, this is the second appearance. This is the first appearance of this car. Probably should have cleaned it up, you know, we got some yoga mats and stuff like that. Anyways, we are starting a new segment. A new segment on the channel that I'm going to call $5 Flips. That is right. $5 Flips, because as you guys can see, I got myself a little... Abraham Lincoln right there. A little Lincoln, as the kids like to call it, a $5 bill. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little game, make it a little bit of a challenge, and uh, go to an LCS where I give myself $5 and only five minutes to pull the best book that I can find in that time frame. Why am I only giving myself five minutes? Because I don't have all day. I have, okay, okay, I gotta, I gotta visit five stores today. But I think that this is gonna be a very, very fun segment here on the channel. We can maybe make this, uh, you know, if you guys are familiar with like One Bite Pizza Reviews, this could be a way for us to do it in comic books here. Just go in there, see what the best book I can get. Maybe talk a little bit about the store, give it a little bit of a, a score or something, put it on the swag scale, maybe. I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna try something out. This should be fun. And uh, you know, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe. If you're enjoying the content, we'd really appreciate it. But with that all out of the way, Let's get into the first LCS. We are at Earth 2 Comics here, Sherman Oaks, California. This happens to be my LCS. This is Swagglehoss' LCS. Here we are in Ventura. You know, sometimes I'll come here and, uh, you know, get, get the new hot variant or number one issue of a book that I will likely never read. But uh, let's talk about the book I got. You know, again, the game, the rules is that I go in, $5, five minutes, you know, it's like I couldn't, I couldn't dig. You know, it was, it was, I was feeling the pressure a lot. You know, I wanted to look at all the books on the wall, but uh, we all know that they're not going to be five dollars. So luckily, uh, at Earth Two here, they had a few bins that were labeled five dollar bins. You know, they had the variant bin, they had some dollar books, but you know, I'm, I'm looking for equity. I'm looking for something that I can potentially flip. You know, we got to be Echo the Dolphin over here. So uh, I went for the tried and true. I went over to the ASM section. Everybody knows, everybody wants Amazing Spider-Man books. And uh, I happened to find a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 279 right there. 279, what is the significance of this? Well, you guys know, this is the first cover appearance of Silver Sable. First cover appearance of Silver Sable. $5 right there, obviously there was some tax. Okay, but you know, don't hold it against me. All right, this is the general rules, $5 generally speaking. But uh, Silver Sable, what do we think about her? Do we think that she's actually gonna be showing up in a Sony movie? Do we care? Do we care about the Sony universe? I mean, at this point, you know, where Marvel is, I feel like the Sony universe might as well be just as good as Marvel, so, I mean, we might care. Silver Sable, a lot of people have been talking about her showing up, you know, in the, you know, the Madam Web movie or whatever the case is. Maybe she'll show up in the Craven movie later this year. It's got relationships to Craven. People thinking that Sydney Sweeney might be Silver Sable. Personally, I would prefer Sydney Sweeney to play Black Cat. But uh, either way, first cover appearance. How do we feel about first cover appearances? I feel like first cover appearances are a good thing, but you know, you have to like, you gotta be a really popular character or we gotta be, you know, in, in 2021 when everybody is buying every single spec book out there for first cover appearances to really matter. I think generally speaking, uh, you know, maybe we can flip this for, uh, negative one dollar on ebay but what do you guys think what do you guys think about silver sable i mean come check it out earth 2 comics if you're ever in the sherman oaks california area pretty cool shop uh you know they got some keys out there they got they got the keys on the wall uh they, they always got a, a good batch of books not a ton of back issues you know it's not a very big store you know digability is two out of five stars you know they have some bins but it, they're you know you're not going to spend all day in here although i do have a little pet peeve my pet peeve is that uh the keys that they have on the wall, uh, or the ones that they have in the glasses, you know, they, they don't have the prices on them. They got the prices behind the books. So I always have to ask the clerk, I have to be like, hey, uh, what's the price you have on this uh, Daredevil 1 right here? And then they got to look at it, because they don't even know. They don't even know what the prices are. They got to like, they, they, they don't remember, because nobody asks, because nobody cares. Nobody, nobody goes to the shop to buy back issues. So they have to look and then, uh, you know, they tell me the price and obviously it's more than I want to pay. And I say, okay, thank you very much. And then I don't buy it. So it just sits in the glass case. I would really prefer it if the prices were on the front of the book. So we didn't have to have that human interaction, you know, cause I, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't know about you guys, but when I go to a comic store, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm just kidding. I will totally talk to you. I had to do a pickup shot because I forgot to mention 
when I was doing the review. Can we talk about facsimiles for $15? Is that the going rate for facsimiles? We're selling above cover price, is that a thing? Because you know the, the, the facsimiles, they can always reprint the facsimiles. And that's, I don't know, that's wild to me. Have I been sleeping on, specking on facsimiles? Should I just be stocking up shelves of new facsimiles and flipping them for 3x? I gotta rethink my whole whole comic book investing strategy. We were at Galaxy of Comic Books in, I don't remember where. I don't remember where I am. I'll put it down here somewhere. Uh, but this is one of the good LCSs near me. I always like coming here. One of the best things about this LCS is that they open at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. So if there's ever like a hot new comic book, I always can feel good about coming here uh, for my chances of being able to get a copy. Five dollars, five minutes, what's the best book I can pull? Uh, luckily for me, today, Galaxy of Comics, I did not time this, was having a 50% off on their back issues. They have a pretty good back issue selection. You know, not the best, not the ultimate best, but generally speaking, they have a lot of good options, a lot of good choices. And, uh, you know, they're really, really good for finding those, like, hot books of the week. You know what I mean? You, you know when there's, like, a hot book that gets announced on Key Collector, and then you, like, need to go to your LCS and see if it's out there? This is the place that I go to when I, when I want to find that hot book. And there were some options of hot books that I almost decided to pick up, but, but there was one book in particular that I felt like I had to get for my $5 flips right here. Now, it was half off. So technically it wasn't the sticker price I had to pay, but I found me a copy of Ghost Rider number 28. First cameo appearance of the Midnight Suns. You guys know this book, super hot one. Now I know what you're thinking, $13 half off, that's not exactly $5, but I wasn't gonna pass that up, okay? This book is still in the poly bag, still in the poly bag, which means it is near mint. Actually, I don't know if that's true. You guys ever uh, think about that? You know, just because it's in the poly bag does not mean that it's actually gonna be a near mint copy. But it is in the poly bag. So, you know, we're thinking like, you know, maybe I could have a nice little flip here, probably on eBay right now. This is a book that goes for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks, maybe. I don't know. So I feel like we're we're doing well here with our $5 flips. Definitely go check out Galaxy Comics. If you're allergic to cats, not a good store to come to. I am allergic to cats, so I'm a little bit sniffly right now. Uh, every time I come here, there's a cat in there. And as much as I like digging around, you know, I'm on, a, I'm on a timer, I'm on a clock because the cat just makes me, you know, sniffle and sneeze and everything, which makes it really tough. All right, post game car show. Like you guys saw, they were having a 50% off sale and uh, I wanted to spend more than five minutes in that store. I needed to dig around some of those bins. So uh, I did pick up some extra books that I thought it would be, uh, you know, fun to talk about here. First one here, Silver Surfer number 15, just the great Human Torch Silver Surfer cover, half dollars off of $29. You guys can do the math. 15 something, 14 something. Clearly, I can't do the math. And then this other one here, Silver Surfer 16. You know, that great Mephisto cover. $32, another half price uh, book right there. So, you know, 15 a pop. Felt like I had to do it. Obviously, those go above my $5 flip rule. But, you know, when in Rome. We are in Chatsworth, California. What is in Chatsworth, California? Not a whole lot, to be honest. Not a whole lot. A lot of uh, long streets, but luckily there is uh, some cool comic book stores. We are at Spiro's Heroes Comic Books in Chatsworth, California. A great store. You know, this is one of those stores that makes the $5 flip segment very, very difficult because you could be in there for hours. You know, you could be digging around for a long, long time and uh, you can get lost. It's one of those stores where, you know, they have a back room and you could do the whole like, oh, $50, fill up a short box, and you can just be in there for dates. But you guys know what it is by now. $5, five minutes, best book that I can pull to flip for $5 flips. Now, I was digging around there, and uh, like I said, you know, you, you saw a lot of the bins, $10 and up, which didn't really help us for a situation because I got a $5 limit. So I had to, you know, be focused be clear, I went straight for the uh, 70s and 80s section, you know, dug around in there. And uh, one, you know, there are a few books that stood out to me, you know, there's a first appearance of Dark Star, first appearance of Brothers Grimm, but there was one book in particular I felt like was worthy of my $5, a book that is guaranteed to go to the moon, because now it's all about DC. Of course, the book I picked up was 
Avengers. Sorry, I always say Avengers. Adventures of Superman number 500. You guys know this book, The Rebirth of Superman. Now, I don't know how you guys feel, but a rebirth in my mind is basically as good as a first appearance, right? I mean, this is pretty much a book that is as valuable as Action Comics number one, because that was the first appearance of Superman, and then technically he died. So this is the first appearance of the real, new, current going Superman, right? So any Superman that James Gunn gives us really is gonna be this version of Superman because the Action Comics number one Superman, uh, he's dead, he's gone. We all know that he died in Death of Superman, right? That was his official death. So that one doesn't count anymore. This is the true Superman right here, right now. So if you guys want this book instead of Action Comics number one, you guys know where to find me. We can make a trade, we can make that happen. I think I could probably, you know, sell this for $6 on eBay. So, you know, after taxes and fees, maybe I'm breaking even overall, but generally speaking, I felt like with the five minutes I had digging around, this was the best book I could pull. All right, what do you guys want from me? Store is great, Sparrow's Heroes. This is one of those stores where it's like, if you need to fill your back issue run, you need to fill your bins, you know, th this is the place to go. Uh, the owner there is, is a great guy. He always gives you a discount too. Uh, they always have sales. So it's a great store, you know, four out of five stars. What do you guys think? Adventures of Superman number 500. That's all I got. We are now in Chatsworth, California, once again at another great comic book store in Chatsworth, California. You know, Chatsworth, California, again, like I said, doesn't have that much great stuff going on, but they got a lot of great comic book stores. And as you guys can see, we were at We Are Heroes Comic Books. We Are Heroes, a great store. Uh, you know, more of like a pop cultural store. They got all types of comic books. They got the Magic the Gathering stuff. They got the pop figurines. They got all the goodies. They do a bunch of signings. They bring the WWE wrestlers here great group of guys that run the store now you guys know the game by now five minutes five dollars best book that i can get in the a lot of time now i thought i came in with a good strategy you know here at we we can be heroes they separated out they got the dc and they got the marvel section and you know obviously dc is all the rage right now so i had to go straight to the booster gold tab you know i thought i was going to hit gold right there going into booster gold no pun intended obviously there were no books left Everybody's buying Booster Gold. Okay, there was one book left, but it was $10. And I don't even know what book it was, but I wasn't gonna pay $10 for that book. So Booster Gold was a bust. So I went to, you know, kind of the more main stuff, Spider-Man, Avengers. There were some Kang variant books in there that could have been a good option, but I wanted to, you know, kind of take away the downside risk. You know, the downside risk. We gotta, we gotta flip this book. I only got $5 to spend. So I decided to go with Iron Man number 43. What are you guys thinking about this right here? You guys are like, what the hell is that book? If you guys don't know, this, what is the significance of this? This is the first appearance of the villain character known as the Guardsman. Now, you guys can see right there, it was $6 on this ticker, but hey, this is my rules, my game. I can break the rules. $5, $6, same difference, right? We already did it with the Midnight Suns book. Okay, we're not gonna give up these opportunities. All right, so decided to go with this one here, you know, on the, on the cusp of a Bronze Age, Silver Age book. I feel like, you know, anytime you're gonna get basically a Silver Age book for $5. You can't go wrong, right? I mean, what's the lowest that it could possibly sell for on eBay? Well, probably $5. But I feel like this is more like a $20 key because the Guardsman, if you guys know, is one of the main villains that goes against Iron Man. I mean, you know, they are the guys that work for the, the US government that guard all the secret military stuff. You know, they're the, they're the jobbers that all the heroes gotta beat up from time to time. So my thought is that the Guardsman might show up in Armor Wars, later on when we get Armor Wars. So I feel like this is kind of a low-key sneaky book right here. And at the very least, you know, the very worst case scenario, it's still a good book. It's still still a bronze silver age book, you know? At the, you know, it's, it's a larger size format too. You know, this is the 20, this is the 25 center, 25 center for five bucks. How can you go wrong with that? All right, we are in Northridge, California at Continental Comics. You can see it right there. Continental Comics, you know, a pretty good store. You know, this is one that I occasionally find myself at. Uh, but one of the problems with this store is, you know, they got all the boxes on the wall. You know, they got all the boxes on the wall and uh, it makes it hard to dig through because you got to pull them off. Sometimes you got to use the step ladder. You know, it's, it's very, very tight space. 
you know, you got to like look through and then the way that it's organized is like a little bit, it's like backwards. Like you would think that it would be like upper left to lower right would be, you know, from name to year, but it actually goes backwards. It's like the, the newer the comic is, the higher it is on the shelf. And then some of the other ones like go lower. It's always really, really confusing. Anyways, luckily for me, one thing that gives Continental Comics a little bit of bonus points is that there is actually a bin in there. A bin that says Dark Hawk on it. So you know what I had to do, okay? I was feeling the clock, I was feeling the pressure, went straight for the Dark Hawk bin, and I pulled myself a book. Five dollars, five minutes, best book I can find for myself. And I got Dark Hawk number one by Kyle Higgins from 2021. How much is this book worth? Obviously it's worth a million dollars. Dark Hawk, any Dark Hawk book is worth a million dollars. So I'm able to flip this one easily on eBay. Minimum, minimum, or, or jokes aside, not a million dollars. Minimum, $375, minimum, minimum. But uh, had to go with the Dark Hawk one. First appearance of Connor Young, the younger version of Dark Hawk. You guys know how they do Miles Morales, the young Spider-Man, Sam Alexander, the young Nova. Well, they tried to do it right here. Connor Young, the young Dark Hawk. And who knows, maybe we're gonna get Dark Hawk in the MCU. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about that. I think it's possible. I certainly think it's possible. But uh, you know, that's what I decided to do. Didn't really have time to, to dig through. You know, you, you gotta go in, you gotta make your choices, you gotta execute. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think of Dark Hawk number one? Obviously, go into the moon. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was five stores, $5 budget, and only five minutes at each store that I allotted for myself. That was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. You know, the ones that are, are, are a little more disorganized are harder to make those digs for because, you know, it's just obviously with a five minute limit, you know, everything's random. It's gonna be hard to find. So the one uh, store, Galaxy's Comics, was, you know, a little bit more easy to navigate because I knew exactly which bins to go to to be able to look through. And luckily it's kind of organized, you know, by bin drawer and stuff. So that's where I think I got my best value here in finding this Midnight Suns first cameo. You know, definitely the 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 book that probably pays for the lot right here of the five books that I got. You know, not the most interesting books, but I thought that this would be kind of a fun experiment to do. See if we can find any gems. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about this type of video series? I thought that would be kind of something cool to do. And, you know, anytime I can go to a comic book store, I can give myself this little bit of a challenge and see if we can actually find any books with some kind of equity out there. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.